Ads heard during the podcast that are not in my voice are placed by third-party agencies outside of my control and should not imply an endorsement by Weird Darkness or myself. Stories and content in Weird Darkness can be disturbing for some listeners and is intended for mature audiences only. Parental discretion is strongly advised. Ukraine has become the focus of almost the entire planet for some time now. And with that focus has come several UFO reports from different regions of Ukraine, many close to where much of the conflict is taking place. And while we should perhaps take many of these sightings with a pinch of salt, the fact is Ukraine has a long history of UFO activity and encounters. These encounters stretch back decades at least to the start of the modern UFO era. And while there are many sightings of strange craft, many of the incidents on record involve encounters with the occupants of these strange cosmic vehicles. If even some of the many UFO sightings that have taken place in Ukraine in the past are accurate and credible, then there is every reason to believe that some of these recent sightings are equally as credible. Without a doubt, one of the most intriguing of these encounters unfolded in the summer of 2008, when a husband and wife were taken on board a strange disc-shaped craft while standing outside their home in the early hours of the morning. Not only did they undergo several experiments and procedures, but they would also claim that they were taken into deep space during their ordeal. What made their bizarre claims even more thought-provoking was an apparent reversal in their respective health conditions following the encounter. I'm Darren Marlar, and this is Weird Darkness. Welcome, Weirdos! I'm Darren Marlar, and this is Weird Darkness. Here you'll find stories of the paranormal, supernatural, legends, lore, the strange and bizarre, crime, conspiracy, mysterious, macabre, unsolved, and unexplained. If you're new here, welcome to the show. While you're listening, be sure to check out WeirdDarkness.com for merchandise, my newsletter, to enter contests, to connect with me on social media. Plus, you can visit the Hope in the Darkness page if you're struggling with depression or dark thoughts. You can find all of that and more at WeirdDarkness.com. Coming up in this episode, it's the Dubna alien abduction case and Ukraine's long history with UFO encounters. So bolt your doors, lock your windows, turn off your lights, and come with me into the Weird Darkness. According to the 20th of June 2008 edition of Facts newspaper, on the evening of January 11th, 34-year-old Vladimir Vornezhsky and his 29-year-old wife Olga, as well as their young son Arthur and their two daughters, Vanessa and Angelica, eight and nine respectively, were at home when Olga realized she needed some groceries from a nearby shop. She asked her two daughters to pick these up for her, which they duly did. However, as they made their way back, they both spotted something strange in the sky overhead. When they arrived back at home at around 9 p.m., they each excitedly informed their parents that they had witnessed a flying star. To begin with, Olga dismissed the girls' claims, offering that they had likely seen a plane or a passing satellite. The girls, though, insisted that what they had seen was not a plane or a satellite, but was a round object with flashing lights of white, yellow, and red. To make their point, each of them sketched a picture of exactly what they had seen. The sketches, incidentally, matched almost completely. Now, not certain if a plane or a satellite could explain what their daughters had seen, Olga and Vladimir went outside to see if they could see anything for themselves. To their amazement, they could each see a strange object that appeared to be hovering over a river in the distance. The more they watched it, 
the more it appeared to be changing shape as it moved around. Olga attempted to capture a picture with her mobile phone, but it only showed a blurred yellow object. The family eventually returned to the house, confident that nothing more of interest would unfold. However, several hours later, at around 2 a.m., with all of the family asleep in their beds, Vladimir was suddenly awoken by a brilliant white light that illuminated the entire room. He turned to wake Olga to inform her what was happening. However, still half asleep, she mumbled that he was dreaming and turned over. Convinced he was still in a dreamlike state, Vladimir also went back to sleep. Vladimir was not the only one who had been brought out of sleep with the bright light, though. Angelica was woken by an intense orange light that shined through a small gap in their bedroom blinds. After several moments, she jumped out of bed to tell her parents about the light. This time, when Angelica burst into the room, Olga woke immediately and turned to wake Vladimir. He awoke and was completely perplexed as to what he was seeing. The entire roof appeared to be completely transparent, allowing him to see straight through into the night skies. Even more amazing was the disc-shaped object that was hovering in the sky over the top of the house. Without even dressing, Olga and Vladimir left their bed and ran outside the house. When they looked up, though, they both stopped dead. In front of the house, at a distance of around 300 feet, a disc-shaped object hovered. An extremely bright light came from the object. As the pair stood and watched the bizarre object, Olga suddenly began to rise into the air in a spiraling motion. Vladimir reached out in an attempt to grab her leg but was unable to do so. Olga continued upwards, feeling as though she was paralyzed while an intense feeling of sickness overcame her. Then things became even more bizarre. Without knowing what had happened or how they had gotten there, Vladimir and Olga were inside a large, furnitureless room with transparent, glass-like walls. They looked around the room for several moments until they settled on several humanoid entities that were in the room with them. Each was around three feet tall, with gray skin and particularly large heads. They also had three fingers on each hand and wore some kind of tight-fitting bodysuit with hoods that covered their heads and masks that covered their faces leaving only the large, black eyes visible. Even stranger, neither Vladimir or Olga could see legs on the entities, who instead moved around in a similar way as a caterpillar would. As they looked over this strange group of creatures, the pair noticed a taller humanoid, around five feet, who wore similar clothing but whose face was completely covered. The smaller entities moved closer to Olga and took her to a medical-like chair, placing her in it. Vladimir, who was previously rooted to the spot in fear, rushed toward his wife in order to take her out of the chair. However, before he could reach her, his progress was halted, as if an invisible wall had suddenly appeared in front of him. Moments later, two of the smaller humanoid entities approached him and dragged him away. He screamed out as they did so, when suddenly a voice appeared in his head, telling him he would soon be back home. Vladimir knew this was one of the creatures speaking to him, telepathically. He attempted to resist them, causing several more of the entities to come and assist the first two. A struggle ensued for several moments, all the while telepathic voices entered his mind asking him not to struggle. Eventually, one of the entities placed four metal rod-like devices on his chest, and he became immediately paralyzed. With Vladimir now incapacitated, the entities turned their attention back to Olga. She was lying back in the chair and, despite looking around her, could not see any types of medical equipment at all. However, when she looked back down at her torso, she was horrified to see that the entities had made an incision across her abdomen. The more she looked, she realized she could see her internal organs. Despite this, she didn't feel any pain or discomfort. In fact, she would later recall feeling a sense of tranquility and relaxation. Although she had no idea of what was taking place, she believed that the humanoid entities were taking samples from her organs. She watched as they used various different medical instruments to do so, 
instruments that she claimed she had never seen before. When these experiments were over, they proceeded to sew the incision shut, although they used some kind of advanced technology to do so, so much so that not even a small scar remained to suggest that anything out of the ordinary had taken place. Even stranger, Olga would later recall that she had suffered from stomach pain throughout her life. However, following the encounter, this pain never appeared again, as if the entities had corrected something. Vladimir also underwent experiments at the hands of the creatures, although seemingly not as extensive as those of his wife. At one stage, he recalled that an object that appeared similar to a handgun was pressed aside his head, although he felt no pain whatsoever. Even stranger, following these experiments, he was taken by these smaller human entities to a separate room where the taller entity was. A bizarre conversation took place, during which Vladimir asked why he and his wife had been taken. To this, the humanoid replied that it simply had to be done. With that, Vladimir and Olga were placed in large, armchair-like seats in a room facing transparent walls. Through the walls, they could see stars and planets all around them, as if they were somewhere in deep space. Vladimir recalled seeing the sun looking like a diffused bright spot of light, while the Earth appeared no bigger than a tennis ball. Then it appeared as though the spacecraft went into some kind of high-speed space travel as Vladimir recalled seeing a flash of white light and a sudden feeling of nausea overtaking him. Within what seemed like an instant, the craft had come to a stop and he and Olga were looking at a planet that was unknown to them. Their encounter was about to take on an even more surreal twist. Vladimir and Olga were taken to another room in the ship that appeared to be some kind of airlock. They could see the smaller entities getting into smaller, cigar-shaped objects that appeared to Vladimir to be some kind of space boat. Vladimir and Olga were placed inside one of these smaller crafts, which then departed from the main vehicle and took them down lower to the surface of the planet. The closer they got to the planet's surface, the more Vladimir could see what looked to be open pits dotted about. There was a lot of activity around these pits, suggesting that they were underground dwellings. He later learned that he was looking on his abductor's own planet and that they did indeed live under the ground. They would soon return to the mothership which had remained in orbit. Perhaps of all the bizarre pieces of information passed to Vladimir was the revelation that both humans and cows were brought to Earth from another planet. Perhaps this is why both humans and cattle appear to be of interest to these apparent extraterrestrial visitors. Once on board the main vessel, Vladimir recalled another flash of light and the same feeling of intense sickness as before, sensing that they were moving extremely fast once again. When they came to a stop, they were once again looking at a planet that they were not familiar with. What followed was described as an attempt on the entity's part to encourage Vladimir to copulate with a female alien entity. However, he would refuse to do so, despite repeated attempts on their part, even having the female entity change form into a beautiful human woman. From this point on, the extraterrestrials focused on human emotions and how bizarre this concept was to them. They would even go as far as to ask why the human race had not destroyed itself given how much they were at the mercy of such emotions. This is an interesting detail and one that other researchers have also stated occupies the minds of these alien visitors. Following these conversations, the pair were returned back to Earth. The following morning at around 11 a.m., Vladimir and Olga awoke in their beds with no memory of how they had gotten there. Equally bizarre, neither mentioned the incident to the other for some time, each privately asking themselves if they might have imagined or dreamt the whole affair. However, after finally speaking up to each other, they realized that what had happened was very real. Vladimir would eventually make contact with UFO researcher Yuri Stepanov, who would agree to put Vladimir under hypnotic regression in order to unlock any possible further memories of the encounter. He would manage to sketch several detailed pictures of the object, as well as of the humanoids themselves. 
Perhaps one of the most intriguing details was that a plasma of some sort surrounded the spacecraft as it traveled through space. This plasma also made the craft invisible to the human eye and made it undetectable on radar. During this investigation, the family was medically inspected to see if any kind of implant might have been left behind. However, there was no evidence to suggest this was the case. There were some bizarre apparent consequences of the encounter, though. For example, Vladimir's gray hair suddenly had color once more, and he generally felt fitter and stronger. Olga's stomach issues never returned, and even stranger, she had the ability to make a drunk person completely sober just by placing her hand on their forehead for two minutes. Despite this, when many in the local community heard of their claims, they were regularly mocked and even accused of having made up the entire affair. It remains one of the most intriguing alien abduction encounters on record. Two years previously, another intriguing encounter was documented in the same newspaper in Ukraine, and it is there we will turn our attention to next when Weird Darkness returns. Sometimes you feel a bit nutty, especially if you're a weirdo. If that feeling transfers to your taste buds as well, I've got some great news for you. Weird Dark Roast Nutty Mummy Coffee. Wrap your taste buds around this medium dark roast blend with shrouds of almond, honey, and chocolate. Each bag of Nutty Mummy is exclusive to Weird Darkness and is roasted to order, then bandaged, I mean bagged, specifically for you to ensure maximum freshness for you, your mummy, and anyone else you share it with. Entomb your old coffee and bring your taste buds back from the dead with Weird Dark Roast Nutty Mummy at WeirdDarkness.com slash coffee. That's WeirdDarkness.com slash coffee. Two years before the abduction of Vladimir and Olga, another strange extraterrestrial encounter took place in Ukraine. According to the June 9, 2006 edition of the same newspaper as our previous story, beginning one evening in June 2006 and stretching right into the following morning, multiple residents of Mariupol witnessed strange, disc-shaped objects hovering over the city. According to the article, Following the day of sightings, phone lines to several Mediopol newspapers were jammed with reports. The sightings began in the evening, when residents from different parts of the city reported seeing six strange objects in the night sky. At first, there was speculation that the objects were NATO aircraft. However, it soon became clear that the objects moved in a way that was not like conventional planes. When the Ukrainian Air Force was asked for comment on the sightings, a spokesman claimed that they had not detected anything out of the ordinary on their radar systems. This was seconded by air traffic control at Mariupol Airport. The following morning, over an industrial area of the city at a little after 9 a.m., a watchman, Nikolai Trinitsyn, noticed multiple strange objects overhead while going over his morning rounds. He would describe them as fast-flying, lighted spheres that were visible despite the bright morning sunshine. He attempted to count them and estimated there were around 20 in total. He called out to his work colleagues who also witnessed the aerial anomaly. They remained visible for around 10 minutes before they simply vanished. The sightings remain unexplained, but the sheer volume of reports suggests that something very strange was making its way around Mariupol that summer's evening in 2006. While there are many UFO encounters in the 21st century, UFO sightings and run-ins with bizarre creatures stretch right the way back to the 1950s at the very least. For example, in the summer of 1952, two strange meetings with bizarre humanoid creatures are on record. Although the exact location is not known, and according to an article in an edition of Interesting Newspaper, the first occurred when a young boy, Ivan Sergevich, was on a camping holiday. 
Suddenly, they noticed a bizarrely strong wind appear out of nowhere around them. In fact, the wind was so sudden and so strong that their horses were significantly disturbed, causing them to scatter in several different directions. Moments later, all who were sitting around the fire chased after their respective horses, leaving Ivan alone aside from an elderly lady. A few moments later, a brilliant flash of white light came from the nearby woodland. As Ivan turned to look in the direction of the light, he saw a bright object with a domed top rising out of the forest. At the same time, he noticed three humanoid entities walking in his direction. They were wearing a helmet on their heads that appeared to obscure any details of their faces. He estimated they were around six feet tall, although each was a slightly different height. They walked up to Ivan, stopping on the other side of the fire. After several moments, the elderly lady reached into her bag and produced a small handful of dust. She threw it into the fire, causing it to crackle more than it already was. When one of the alien creatures went to walk closer to the first, the elderly lady threw another handful of dust on the fire. A loud crackling sound caused it to stop in its tracks. The creatures remained where they were, staring at Ivan and the elderly lady until the three creatures eventually turned around and walked back toward the light. They eventually disappeared into the brightness. A moment later, the light was suddenly gone. Around the same time, this time in Belgorod Denistrovsky, according to an article in the Komsomolskaya Pravda newspaper, an elderly gentleman who suffered from insomnia was at his home, unable to sleep, looking out of his window. To his utter shock, he could see five strange humanoid figures in his neighbor's yard. He watched them for several moments, noticing how they appeared to have horns on their heads. Deciding they looked too strange and menacing for him to confront them, he turned the lights off in the house and remained inside until morning. The following day, when he went to investigate, he discovered that every one of the apples on his neighbor's apple tree had disappeared. This, however, was just the first of such sightings of horned creatures in the area during that summer. What's more, many of the encounters featured food going missing. What was particularly interesting about these sightings was that many of them occurred near an ancient fortress, one that many locals claimed had multiple secret tunnels and passageways connected to it. Further, according to local legends, strange creatures lived under the fortress and used the ancient tunnel network to move about. Stranger still, other reports tell of a UFO crash near the fortress, the survivors of which also used the tunnels under the fortress for sanctuary. Whether of consequence or not, all of the sightings occurred during the nighttime hours. The following year, another humanoid encounter unfolded. According to Anton Anvilov of the Yaroslavl UFO Group, a strange humanoid encounter unfolded over a three-day period in Jadonvika between the 17th and 20th of August in 1953. The story goes that a woman named Lena Ivanova Kravitz was on her way to visit her aunt when her attention turned to a silver globe flying through the air at an altitude of around 150 feet and at a distance of around 300 feet from her. She continued to watch the object as it descended toward the ground and disappeared behind the house's opposite. Although the witness was unaware at the time, another lady who lived in a house nearby was outside her home getting water from the well when she noticed three strange figures standing underneath a nearby apple tree. She watched as the three figures cut away one of the branches that was full of apples. She continued to watch as the three men went from tree to tree, first a plum tree and then a cherry tree, each time they would take samples of the fruit that grew there. She noticed that they also appeared to be carrying other samples, including wheat and rye. Then, one of the figures turned around and looked directly at her. It then turned to the other two and alerted them to her presence. Each of the three figures was now staring directly at her. To begin with, the woman didn't suspect they were anything more than teenagers collecting food. She assured them that she wouldn't scold them for stealing. However, when they began approaching, she quickly realized that they were not teenagers. They were not human at all. The closer they got, the witness could tell that each of them was wearing the same style dark overalls 
gloves on their hands and a helmet on their heads, as well as the food, the witness can also see they were carrying transparent tubes, each containing a small animal such as a frog, a lizard, and even a fish. When they were a short distance from her, one of them began speaking in badly broken Russian. He told her that they had flown from up there while pointing toward the sky. They further claimed that they were looking for their people, although they feared that humans had annihilated them. Whether in shock or not, the witness asked them if they were gods, to which they appeared genuinely perplexed. At this point, the witness became suddenly scared and began making the sign of the cross over her chest. Sensing her fright, the figure assured her that they were not gods and that they had come from another planet. Furthermore, after their race had discovered the Earth, they had sent a scout ship to investigate. However, they had not heard from them and feared something had happened to them, and so ultimately sent another search team to locate them. The woman was not sure how long this missing unit arrived on Earth, but she replied that there had recently been a war and that they could have been shot down during the conflict. Perhaps unsettlingly, the figure replied that they had been watching Earth for some time and were more than aware of the many wars that had been fought here. Even more bizarre, they claimed that the wars fought on Earth had an effect on natural disasters on their home planet. Although it was not seemingly explained why this was, they did say it was part of their overall mission to encourage humans to live in peace. They asked more questions of the woman, such things as how we measured time, as well as more questions about religion. They were curious about many things, even asking what the firewood was that the woman had been carrying and what it was used for. Following the exchange, the figure told the woman to turn around and look behind her. There, hovering a short distance above the ground, was a large silver sphere. The figure informed her that they had traveled from their planet in this silver craft. She walked with them as they headed toward the object. Before they boarded the craft, they offered her a piece of their bread. She took it initially, but when she snapped a piece off, she could see a black substance inside that she did not wish to eat. She thanked them and handed the bread back. With that, they entered the craft which rose into the air before disappearing into the night sky. Another account occurred just short of two decades later in the summer of 1971 in Odessa. According to the publication The Secret Doctrine, a young woman named Masha had arrived in Odessa from Crimea. Of particular interest to this visitor were the underground catacombs that spread out under the city. Despite the fact that many people had disappeared investigating the catacombs, Masha was desperate to explore them, and as there would be a guide, she felt more than confident there would be no problems. They moved through the networks on their way to a one-time Second World War hideout in chains so nobody would be left behind. As Masha was the tallest of the group, she was the last link in the chain. Everything progressed as normal to begin with. Then, however, out of nowhere, Masha thought she heard the sound of a young child crying. It appeared to be coming from one of the side passageways. Before she realized it, she had separated herself from the group in order to locate the distressed youngster. However, before she could contemplate anything else, she felt a strong blow on the back of her head and then everything went black. She would be missing for several days, with multiple searches undertaken in an attempt to locate her. Then, on the third day after her disappearance, she walked into the main part of the catacombs and was discovered by another group of tourists. They would escort her to the surface where, after she was checked over, she promptly returned to Crimea. She would say nothing of what happened to her family upon her return. However, both they and her friends noticed there was something profoundly different about her now. Whereas she was outgoing and talkative before, she was now quiet and withdrawn. However, when it was discovered that she was pregnant, she became the talk of the community as you might imagine, this news only made her parents question her more, not least as to who the father was. When she told them that not only did she not know who the father was, but how she had even become pregnant in the first place, they found it difficult to believe her. Ultimately, she would give birth to a baby boy. 
However, as he grew, it was clear to all present that this child was not what would have been considered normal. He was exceptionally intelligent and developed extremely quickly. He would read academic material and kept to himself and had few, if any, friends. He appeared to be completely human. However, his mother and those close to him could all see small differences. For example, he was quite short, especially given his mother's height. He also had a rather small frame and a slightly larger than normal head. His eyes were also larger than normal, while his mouth was smaller than most. Strangest of all, though, was his disappearance in the late 1990s in the same Odessa catacombs where his mother had gone missing. Unlike his mother, however, he was never seen again. Five years later, another strange occurrence, this time involving a truck driver and three stranded motorists who turned out not to be stranded at all, nor was their vehicle anything made in an automobile factory. That story is up next on Weird Darkness. There are very few among those with a love for the supernatural who don't also have a passion for Edgar Allan Poe. Poe wasn't simply a melancholy author who wrote about premature burials, sinister black cats, and talking ravens. He was much more. If you've ever read a modern mystery or horror novel, you can thank Poe. Poe invented the modern mystery story, mostly invented science fiction, and was the first writer to take the horror stories of the Gothic era and set them in modern times, starting a trend that continues today. With a lifelong interest in Poe, Troy Taylor decided to take his own look at the mysterious and macabre writer, his tragic life, unexplained death, and lingering hauntings. He invites listeners along to delve into the strange and bizarre world of Edgar Allan Poe, from his early life to his tragic marriage his insane grief, his dramatically failed career, his links to an unsolved murder and the mystery of what happened to the writer in the five days before his unexplained death. Even more than a century and a half later, no one knows what happened to Poe before he was found delirious on the streets of Baltimore, Maryland, or what killed him. Why did he disappear and then show up in an incoherent state, wearing another man's clothes, Where did he go when he vanished, and who was the mysterious Reynolds that Poe whispered about in his dying breath? And perhaps strangest of all, does he haunt the mysterious graveyard where his body is buried? Nevermore, The Haunted Life and Mysterious Death of Edgar Allan Poe, written by Troy Taylor, narrated by Darren Marlar. Find a link to the book on the audiobooks page at WeirdDarkness.com. Five years after the Odessa incident, just outside Chernivtsi in the early hours of January 8, 1976, was another bizarre incident that unfolded and was also documented by Anton Anfalov. A truck driver from a glass-packing factory, referred to as Nikolai N. in the report, was driving his truck when, after deciding he was tired and needed to rest, he pulled his vehicle to the side of the road. He wasn't sure how long he had been asleep but around 1 a.m. there was a sudden knocking on the window of the truck's cabin. When he opened his eyes and looked out the window, he saw three men standing on the road outside. They appeared perfectly normal, although due to the darkness he could not see their faces clearly. The men spoke through the wind to Nikolai in Russian, claiming that they were having trouble with their car. Not sensing any danger or anything out of the ordinary, he opened the truck's door and went to help. He followed the three men a short distance. 
However, instead of being a car that they'd led him to, there was a cylinder-shaped object that was standing upright with a domed section at the top that glowed magnificently. At the base of the object, a ladder stretched toward the ground from an open hatch. Despite the obvious strangeness of the situation, Nikolai would later recall that he didn't feel afraid at all, in fact, quite the opposite. He was invited to step on board the craft, which he duly did. He was asked to sit in one of the chairs that were positioned around the room, which he recalled reminded him of a salon. Within moments of sitting down, he blacked out. When he awoke, he found himself laying on a strange table. His arms were stretched over his head, and he could see strange cables and devices attached to various places on his body. He was told he was at his host's base and there was nothing to worry about. A short time later, he was helped up onto his feet and led into another room. This room had numerous screens, devices, and a huge map of the Earth hanging overhead. Several of the extraterrestrials were in the room, occupied by their respective chores. One of them walked over to Nikolai and informed him that they were on the moon. What's more, they would dress him in a special suit so that they could explore the surface. He was led to an entrance through another large hall. He stepped into an elevator, which proceeded to take them to the surface of the moon. He would recall that he could see the Earth from where he stood, even down to the cloud cover. He walked around the surface for several minutes with his guide before they stepped onto the elevator once more and returned to the base. Shortly after this, he was placed back on the spacecraft where he once again lost consciousness. The next thing he knew, he was back inside his truck, and it was morning. He looked around. There was no sign of the three men, but he knew he had not imagined the encounter. In a further twist, several years later, while he was walking along the street, he spotted a man who he recognized from somewhere, although he couldn't recall from where. When the man stopped and suddenly asked him how his trip to the moon had been, he suddenly realized he was looking at one of the extraterrestrials from years earlier. Another thought-provoking encounter occurred on the night of the 17th, going into the 18th of April 1982 in Simferopol, Crimea. The incident was documented by Vladimir A. Borominsky and Vladimir A. Belozyarov of the Simferol UFO Research Group. According to the account, an electrician, Yuri Vasilievich Zabroy, was at his home with his wife at around 8 p.m. when the lights in the property suddenly dimmed. There had recently been problems with some of the electrical fuses on the apartment block where they lived, and so, suspecting the same thing was happening now, Yuri and his wife decided to turn all the electricity off and turn in for the evening. Several hours later, however, the night would take a bizarre turn. Yuri awoke to see a strange shape appear on the wall, causing parts of the plaster to fall off. He got out of bed and began to walk toward the wall. However, after taking several steps, he was suddenly unable to move. He would recall that it felt as though there was an unseen force holding him in place. He kept on trying to move, however, and stretched his arm outright, eventually managing to touch the raised spot on the wall. When he did so, there was a sudden flash of light, and a sense of becoming magnetized went through his body. Then things got even stranger. A small opening on the wall appeared, and in it Yuri could see what appeared to be a small flying saucer-shaped craft. This object flew out of this opening and into the room, increasing in size as it did so. As he watched in amazement, the saucer suddenly appeared hologram-like, and he saw strange lines appear over it, like lines you would see in television interference. Out of this interference, three strange creatures appeared and walked toward Yuri. As they approached, they also grew in size. In fact, not only were they growing, they were changing in appearance, almost in an evolutionary way. In no time at all, the creatures were decidedly humanoid. When Yuri asked in his own mind if these were aliens, he was answered telepathically. This made him realize that these creatures could read his thoughts and he felt a sudden fear run through him this followed by a second fear that he would be abducted. Ultimately, however, he was informed that they wished to extract sperm from him only in order to assist in a hybridization program. 
They did this mechanically, claiming that several females of their race would be inseminated. The next thing he realized, it was the following morning and he was back in his room. All looked normal aside from a very small spot on the wall where he had seen the strange craft appear the previous evening. Several years later, in June 1989 near Kharkiv, according to a report from the Kirov UFO Group, a strange object was witnessed by Ivan Rebenshko while he drove around a factory area where he worked. In front of him, he could see a strange, luminous spot which was descending toward the ground directly in front of the vehicle, causing him to bring the car to a stop. As the light continued to descend, the entire area was lit up in its brilliant glow. Despite the surreal nature of the events unfolding around him, he got out of the car in order to get a closer look. He took several steps forward before two doors on the side of the object suddenly opened. Although he didn't know why he stepped forward onto this strange craft, the inside of the craft was in complete darkness and the floor appeared to move as if there was a gentle earthquake causing him to put his hands on the walls for balance. After a moment or two, without understanding why, the witness stepped further into the craft, eventually arriving in a different room that appeared to be some kind of control center. Then things took an even more dramatic turn. A voice appeared in his head informing him that he was about to be taken to another planet. In response to this, Ivan began to make attempts to leave the room but somehow found his way out blocked. Although he couldn't recall how, he found himself being placed in a large box that then covered him with a loose, soft material. The covered box was surprisingly comfortable and calming, and Ivan was soon asleep. When he awoke, he felt an intense pain in his left hand, recalling it felt as if something was ripping it apart. After a moment or two, the pain suddenly stopped, but it still felt as though it was being pulled at. He was subjected to several further experiments before looking out from the spacecraft at the surface of an unknown world where he noticed several large communication bases and transmission towers. Perhaps strangest of all, he was told that this base functioned automatically. Essentially, it was controlled by artificial intelligence. Many UFO researchers have put forward the idea that aliens could very well be some kind of artificial intelligence, robots or machines. Might this add a little more weight to those suggestions? The next thing Ivan realized, he was back on the road, the bright light fading fast until it was gone completely. A little over six months later, in the Donetsk region, another abduction encounter unfolded. According to an account in the book at the Edge of the Unknown or What is Behind the Curtain by Genedy Yaleshensko, which unfortunately I was not able to find online, and relayed by the veteran researcher Albert Rosales, a 68-year-old man was abducted from his home in Donetsk in the early hours of February morning in 1990. On the night in question, Ivan Nikonorovich was brought out of sleep by the sound of his dogs barking outside. He quickly got out of bed and pulled on his clothes before making his way outside to investigate. Once there, he was confronted by the sight of three tall humanoid figures, each around 10 feet in height. Ivan's immediate reaction was to turn and run. However, as he tried to do so, he tripped up and fell to the ground. Moments later, he felt a change and was seemingly under the control of these strange figures. He found himself walking toward the three tall humanoids and was powerless to stop his steps. When he got closer, he could see a round object that he presumed was the strange creature's craft. He continued toward the object, stepping onto a ladder and going inside. The three apparent extraterrestrials followed him. As each of them walked through the entrance, the one-piece suit they'd been wearing outside simply peeled away of its own accord and disappeared, revealing a lighter body garment underneath. Ivan studied the aliens, recalling how they had faces that were human-like except for large round eyes, a small mouth, and a bridgeless nose that made it appear flat. One of the figures was male and the other two were female. Ivan was subjected to a barrage of experiments and medical procedures involving devices and instruments that he had never seen before. Following this, 
he was escorted into another part of the craft and placed onto a piece of furniture similar to a sofa. When he stared out the window in front of him, he could see that they were flying high above the earth, with the lights of the cities appearing like dots. Then the craft set off at a blistering speed and into the deep reaches of space. Ivan recalled that he'd see various planets up close during this time before eventually being returned home. While some were, perhaps understandably, doubtful of his claims, Ivan became quite ill following the encounters, particularly in the immediate aftermath where he couldn't eat for three days and suffered from aches all over his body. Despite things being as precarious as they are at the time of this recording, UFO sightings have continued in Ukraine today. In August 2019, for example, a white triangular craft was witnessed by various people flying over the country. Several people managed to capture video footage of the object, and it appeared to have no wings, windows, or insignia. Even more bizarre, as people watched the object move through the cloudy daytime sky, it appeared on several occasions to morph into a disc-shaped object before changing back again although this could have been dependent on the angle the object was viewed from. Some researchers put forward at the time that the object may have been the TR-3B aircraft, an alleged secret aircraft of the United States that some people claim makes use of reverse-engineered alien technology. Whether the object was part of an American mission or whether the craft has somehow gotten into the hands of other nations is perhaps open to debate. In February 2022, in Odessa, two glowing objects were filmed hovering in the early evening sky. The objects appeared solid and metallic and approximately the size of a small van. Only weeks later, on the 1st of March, in an unknown location but one that was experiencing shelling due to the conflict with Russia, a disc-shaped object was witnessed hovering in the distance. The object, which was captured on video from an apartment window, is perfectly clear. Given the bombardment taking place at the time, we might assume that it was a reasonable distance away and so was likely quite large. You can see the video of the UFO near the explosions on YouTube. I've placed a link to the video in the show notes of this episode. UFO sightings and encounters with strange humanoid creatures have been reported in Ukraine for decades. It's perhaps also intriguing to note the many encounters with humanoids, many of which resemble the humanoid encounters of the 1950s in terms of the attempts of these extraterrestrials to pass on knowledge and wisdom to human beings. There are, of course, other incidents that are much more harrowing, suggesting that there may, like in other countries around the world, be more than one extraterrestrial race that's passed through Ukraine over the decades. Perhaps Ukraine's location, looking out on the Black Sea, might explain the rich history of UFO and alien encounters. After all, we know there is a direct connection to these strange unidentified objects and large bodies of water. We might also remember that in terms of size, it is the second largest country in Europe, and its size alone perhaps dictates it will have more than its fair share of strange aerial encounters on record. Whatever the reason might be, UFO sightings continue to occur in Ukraine today and will likely continue for the foreseeable future. Thanks for listening. If you'd like the show, please share it with someone you know who loves the paranormal or strange stories, true crime, monsters, or unsolved mysteries like you do. And please leave a rating and review of the show in the podcast app you listen from. You can also email me anytime with your questions or comments through the website at WeirdDarkness.com. That's also where you can find all of my social media, listen to free audiobooks that I've narrated, shop the Weird Darkness store, sign up for the email newsletter to win monthly prizes, find other podcasts that I host like Allegedly and Church of the Undead, and find the Hope in the Darkness page if you or someone you know is struggling with depression or dark thoughts. All stories in Weird Darkness are purported to be true unless stated otherwise, and you can find source links or links to the authors in the show notes. Weird Darkness is a production and trademark of Marler House Productions. Copyright Weird Darkness 
And now that we're coming out of the dark, I'll leave you with a little light. Romans 12, verse 16. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. And a final thought from Stephen Curtis Chapman. I don't see the big picture. I don't have a clue, but I know God does. I'm going to declare that, even if I don't feel it right now. I'm Darren Marlar. Thanks for joining me in the Weird Darkness. Some researchers put forward at the time that the some ob some researchers uh, some researchers put forward at the time, although the exact location is not known, and according uh, and according although the exact location is not known, and according to the to the to an article, <laughs> I'm struggling with two letter words, folks. Yes, and I'm a professional. Around the same time, this time in Belgorod Denistrovsky, according to an article in the a long word I don't know how to pronounce. Yeah. Hey weirdos, be sure to click the like button and subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. I post videos seven days a week. And while you're at it, spread the darkness by sharing this video with someone you know who loves all things strange and macabre. If you want to listen to the podcast, you can find it at WeirdDarkness.com slash listen.